What's up, Wetback? It's ball or nothing. Oh. <laughs> I'm your host, John Ross, with me as always. It's Jasper Grover, Edward Dunstan. Gather around, it's time to go another three years of it. Did you enjoy Gather Around? Yeah. Yes. I didn't get Long to go, but I enjoyed watching it. Yes. <laughs> I, um... I got a bit uh, on my Geelong um, shit, as usual, with uh, not so much Norwood Oval, but um, the Mount Barker football field that they were allowed to play games in, given that we always get our games moved from getting your park to the MCG. Um, <laughs> yet they're allowed to play it, you know, like Mars Field in, in, in Ballarat. And, but other than that, I'm over it. It was a good weekend of footy. Definitely sounds like you're <laughs> It was I mean, a good weekend. What, what an amazing, amazing weekend! Though. It's like first gather round ever uh, in the AFL. All the games in one place. And um, are you guys of the opinion that it should be somewhere else, or is Adelaide the only place that this could be held? Uh, I reckon it should move around. Oh, I think it should stay in Adelaide. Because wasn't it the idea of like the South Australian government or something like that, or tourism? I'm actually not sure where it came from. It's an NRL. It's definitely been in place in the NRL. Okay. Uh, so um, I, I like it in Adelaide. That said, it, there's actually the UK Rugby Union League predates the NRL one. Apparently in yeah. Cardiff every year or something. Um, yeah. they hold, That's so, probably where the NRL got it from. Yeah, yeah. But AFL would have copped it from NRL as these ideas uh, grow. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know whether the AFL instigated it or if the Adelaide uh, South Australian government uh, initiated it. Okay. Okay. What just, obviously we'll talk about actual football soon, but with gather round and them extending it for several years or whatever, don't you think that's a bit soon? Like do you, it's typical do you guys... AFL. They, uh, they do something and then they, it's written in stone. They get Moses, they hand the tablet over. And that, this is how it has been and how it will always be from now yeah. until eternity. You've got to strike while the iron's hot. Really? Okay. Because, like, I got the feeling that, you know, like, maybe you see some, like, um, I don't know, you just hear about someone who, like, just met this person recently and, like, they're engaged <laughs> and you're like, really? <laughs> Already? Okay. <laughs> um, and it's like AFL's decided after this one experience that it's like, yeah, 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 we're gonna lock it. It'll in be interesting now. to see if it is as popular in years to come. If there's yeah. as many attendants, I think you know they made an uh, interesting point that if they have more time to prepare for it, they can probably do more around the games as well and um, outside of the games. Yeah, they've got to fix up the ticketing stuff with the double headers. I think. Yeah. <laughs> well, what was um, the issue they, there? Well, saying that every game was sold out, but then. The crowds were like one third full a lot of the oh, time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was that was embarrassing. Like, um, like obviously they could say it sold out because they probably sold fifty thousand tickets, but across two games. So yeah. I think we need um, our rule master to have a think and uh, oh, come up oh, with don't a solution worry, yeah. to this problem. <laughs> Absolutely. Um it's a it's a very, very important issue. But right. I think in general yeah, just like I, um, yeah, I enjoyed it. I thought it was really good. Good round of footy. I enjoyed it. I'm glad it's coming back, and I'm glad it's staying in Adelaide. Um, <laughs> all right. So this week we'll go into my top five moments as usual. I've got my power rankings as well. I do have uh, some summaries and some thoughts from some of the games, and then we'll get into a couple of Eddie's got some ideas for some potential rule changes in the near future. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, there were a couple of interesting tweets on uh, Twitter as well from Swamp that might be cool to look at. Mm. And we'll look at a I've got a different trivia. Yeah. I, I finally branched out. Oh, I do. Good. It's branched away from Swamp this week. I gave yeah, him a nice. break. Did you get that um, uh, your quiz questions from the 100 Years of AFL book that was uh, came out in like 96, 97? <laughs> I, I did, yeah. <laughs> it's very relevant. Doing a, it's a question about Angelo Lekas. So I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Warwick Kappa. <laughs> we'll um and we'll finish with a couple of the games from this coming round. Another five days of footy and sadly not mm-hmm. any games on Thursday night, but that's okay. 
couple of um, not too interesting matchups. I think Bombers and Pies will be good given recent form, but other than that, maybe Should Blues. We talk about the uh, the round just gone first. Yeah, we'll, we'll get into that. Good point. Good point. All right. So my number five moment from Gather Round, and um, you'll notice that none of them is actually just Gather Round itself. I think that that that's overstated, but. Mm-hmm. I thought the Crows were very impressive. The Bombers, Eddie, last week we talked about the Bombers and I had them at 12th in my power rankings and we were sort of Mm. like, that's good. We also had the conversation that they've got a brutal stretch of games over the next six weeks or five weeks. Mm. And if they win even one of them, we'll be stoked. Well, guess what, Eddie? (laughs) One it was. They're one of one so far. And um, the Saints, I thought... Ironically, even though the Saints lost on the weekend, that was the best game of footy I thought they played all the season. Wow. It was an interesting game. It was an interesting game. Low scoring, but I thought it was still good. But I want to start with the Crows because the Crows were absolutely awesome. They came out and kicked, what was it, seven goals in the first quarter? Yeah, it was over. It might have even been eight, and they never really looked back. Mm, Their forward line looks dynamite. I've... And well, they were also able to defend. They could defend the two best, the you know, what are considered the best forwards in the competition right now. Mm. I I'd kind of always, like I've been saying, I kind of thought the Blues were not really that good or not really. They've got, they've, a lot of people think that they're really good. And I think it's what happened was they beat the Tigers and everyone, were, or they, they drew with the Tigers and everyone mm. said, oh, that's, you know, they're pretty good. They beat the Cats mm. and everyone was like, whoa, look at this team. But you got to remember, like, the Tigers, they've lost three in a row. They've not had a very good season. The Cats mm. were really not in form back then. And then even if you look at it, the uh, Cats' two wins have come against the Hawks and the Eagles, who are the two worst teams in the league. And then the Blues only just beat the Giants. And I don't think the Giants have done anything to really impress mm. anyone either. They're probably also a bottom sort of four team. Or it's they're about because all right. So I, I, these are and then they got points. destroyed by the crows. So like, are the blues mm. good? I don't like. What have they done is, to show us? That I think good? that is a hard question to answer because if you know, I would say in those games, like uh, in the Richmond, Richmond was much better in round one than they were like in the most recent game. Geelong actually played a pretty. It's like Carlton beat decent opposition in those games. But I also agree with you that I don't think they're are like they, that good just Are yet, they decent so. opposition though? Because if you I look at the rest pretty decent. Like you gotta you gotta beat who you, who's in front of you. And like That's I true. think those teams are okay. Um, but I do think Adam Saad is out with a hamstring injury and he's a huge loss. I think he's one of the most important players in Carlton. Bearing the lead, Doherty is gonna be out for at least two months and Wow. He's missed his first game. And I think that people, um, you know, people were saying, oh, well, Sam Walsh is back. And Sam Walsh is obviously great. But I think Sam Doherty is probably their best player on their team. Of mm. course, you can make an, you can make so many arguments for, like, Cripps and uh, mm. Wiedering, Mackay. I think it's Walsh and Kerno are probably their two, top two. And Cripps maybe would be my yeah. top three. But um, so, I know it's not yet trivia time. But mm. I think this speaks to Carlton's record at Adelaide Oval. Yeah. That was their Horrible, seventh loss there out of seven games. They've never won there. Yeah. Wow. Uh, and there are two other teams who have never won at Adelaide Oval. Can you guess who they are? It's not the Bombers because the Bombers have definitely won at Adelaide Oval. I'm it's pretty not sure. The Bombers. No. Um, oh, it'll Bombers be six times. Gold Coast. Gold Coast is one. They have played nine games there and they are zero for nine. Oh my god. The other one has played a Victorian team. Geelong? No, no, Geelong's won a game there. The Geelong's won eight games there. Eight games. games Okay. Okay, we played there. Um it's uh they've lost ten games there. It's a Melbourne team. It is. It is North Melbourne. They've never won there either. Yeah, right. Very surprising. That would be not good. Um, I think I think the Crows are starting to turn a page, though. Like, if you look at their key players, like Josh Rochelle, he's 20 years old. He's playing amazing. Uh, Fogarty came back from injury, kicked five goals, career high. Thought that was awesome. Um, 
Adelaide scored 11 of its 20 uh, inside 50 entries, like in the opening quarter. They just absolutely blew them away. Um, it got as high as would have finished on 56 points. Um, but yeah, I thought it was just a complete blowout. And but also, like I was saying before, like it was the Crows' defense shutting down Kerno and Mackay was was I think the biggest surprise. Oh, it, like it was incredible. Like they, like the way Adelaide played was a complete team performance. What are you going to say, Jess? Oh no, I didn't. I, I was just thinking I didn't see the game, so I don't have too much to comment on it. It was an mm. awesome game. I think you missed a really good one. So okay. Here's uh, not too often you say that about a 10 goal blowout. <laughs> <laughs> I do like to watch the Blues lose. Um, mm. Here's Carlton's schedule coming up. So they played the Saints this weekend and then they got mm. West Coast. So they should beat West Coast. That's a, that's a win. Then they've got. good with uh, Photoshop, I would be Photoshopping a Blues lose like Blues clues. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I will. <laughs> okay, then they play the Lions, the Bulldogs, the Pies, the Swans, and the D's, and the Bombers. So that's a pretty tough stretch. Again, they could go one and, what is that, eight? One and eight? I, that's a uh, big they, call. I, they're not yeah. going to go one and eight. It's a big call. Okay, but so... It's a tough stretch nonetheless. So your, your number five of your top five included the Bombers and the Saints. Yes, bombers. Now, Eddie, what's okay. going on with the bombers? So, okay. So, to all the listeners out there, currently my uh, partner's parents are staying with us at the moment, and my partner's mum in particular loves watching footy. Anyway, so her Saints are going really well, right? And she's enjoying it. My bombers are also playing well, and uh, and they're, and really, like, you know, people are pointing out, like, oh, this is the best they've played in quite a while. But, like, look, if I look back into history, um, I would see that over the last 15, maybe 16 years, Essendon has had a number of quite good starts to the season. And so my question to both of you, um, I was actually going to lead this off with, have you seen the film Arrival? But I'll go straight to my point. <laughs> is that like, if <laughs> if you knew that your team was eventually going to crumble, but they were playing really good early season form, could you enjoy it? Like, would you just be like, this is great. How good is this? Or would you be like, no, they're eventually going to crumble and fall over. And so like, I don't know. what, what... It's uh, it's varying degrees. It's a, uh, it's like a 2008 cats, 2009 saints. Like they had awesome regular seasons, but then they didn't get, they got to the grand final, but they didn't win. Which is heartbreaking to lose a grand final, or like, is it like uh, was it the ruse maybe like six years ago where they started like eight and zero, and then they were like one and fourteen or something after that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I I just have this so with the Saints and the Dons and the Crows all had you know so so seasons last year, and it's like I just think that not all of them are going to finish that great, and it's like look, I'm happy to back Essendon in as the one that falls apart halfway through the season, but. Like I think, um, what, at least one of those clubs is is definitely not going to make the finals, and, um, and yeah, it's I mean, it, it's 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 hard to gauge. Uh, and- even five <laughs> rounds in, it's so hard to gauge form because only there's play, teams haven't played every team, obviously. So until we know who the good teams are. It's hard to know who the good teams are. That's a very Donald Rumsfeld quote of me, but uh, you don't really <laughs> He's know. He's one of your quote. absolute idols. So. <laughs> I, I, you, I, I don't, I've got a background on, so you can't see my poster of him behind me, but uh, yeah. it's up there on the wall, trust it's, me. You have um, that one where he's talking about unknown knowns and yeah, you know, yeah, known exactly. knowns. Yeah. And, yeah. But okay, uh, so my question is like... So is it um, like, a, is it a, like a, a movie comparison would be like Armageddon well, or Deep Impact or something like it's, that it's, where it's you, know, you know it's coming? So how would you like to spend your final days? (laughs) But like, you know, I'd say I'm not sure. Like, I feel like I should be enjoying this run more, but I'm like, nah, the bombers are going to crash. Like, um, like they're looking all right now, but it's just like. That just means that if they actually do very well, very well, then you're going to like explode in like some sort of. Oh my God. It actually might like a vibrate, like, you know, (laughs) but like. Spontaneous blast out of like jizz. Yeah. We'll get to next round eventually, but, but right now. Yes, long story short, the Bombers played fantastic and they're playing with like a level of structure and reliability that I have not seen in quite a long time. 
but they have done this before. So um, I am tempering my expectations. Like, yep, good win. But, um, you know, I, I think I will start to, um, as Ted Lasso would say, believe if uh, they're doing the same thing in like six rounds. So They're also playing without Zach Merritt this weekend against the Pies. Yes. Question. Mm. There's this thing in the NFL, I'm wondering if it exists in the AFL, where if like a bad team or a mediocre team, like an average team um, or a good team, if they beat like the top team, so say, mm. you know, like the Kansas City Chiefs, or I guess to put it in footy terms, like say a team beats the D's, so the Bombers beat the mm. D's, it's kind of like they win their Super Bowl and basically the best bet you can ever make coming off that. So a lot of um, like oh, yeah, amateur bettors week, might, right? <laughs> might be like, whoa, that team beat the best team, so therefore they mm. must be somewhat good. But then they yeah. expend all their energy into that game and then they play like a bottom six team the next week and they yeah. lose. Is that a thing? Does that happen in the footy? Is, this is 100% what the Bombers do. I'll, t- I'll tell you a story. Um, <laughs> the Bombers, the Bombers in... Uh, 2009 and 2010 beat the Saints when they were flying in both years, and we we beat them. And in 2011, we beat Geelong, who would eventually go on to win the premiership, and we beat them when they were flying. And I mean, look, actually, I don't have that off the top of my head how we performed the week after, but um, each year we either got knocked out in the first round of finals or didn't make them. So I my my lock of the week is uh, Collingwood the Collingwood will be Essendon. The <laughs> bombers lose. <laughs> that is a great. I like that. I like your tipping theory, and I'm on board. It <laughs> even happened last year. Think about the pies and what we know now. But they mm. were playing so well and in form. But their losses, one loss came to the Eagles in Perth. Mm. They didn't lose to North yeah. Melbourne, but they were like two minutes away from the game. It was really close, losing. wasn't it? Yeah. So their two worst games came against the two worst teams. Mm. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. Okay. What about these players? So Darcy Parrish playing well. Dylan mm. Shield playing really well. Yeah. McGrath? Yeah, he's playing good. Playing well. Setterfield's playing apparently way above what all everyone's expectations were. <laughs> Same with Redmond. Yeah, Red, Redmond has been one of those players where most Essendon supporters would know who he is and that he's a good player. Um, but then I think now he's, like, garnering more attention. So, um, And Sam Draper? Yeah, yeah he's been good. <laughs> is he's there, like a, um, Who else in the yeah. team is, is playing to that level? of? Or do you think I should add people in oh, or take people out of that? Oh, yeah, no, no. I think the... So the whole back line is playing pretty good. Um, Jake Kelly's just like a lockdown defender doing his job. Jordan Ridley has been consistent for like several years now. Our back line, aside from, we just need like one, like Brandon Zerk Thatcher's come into it a little bit, but we need like one big key back. Um, and then it would be looking pretty good. Because otherwise, we're our back line's looking great. I'd say it's more, I still don't trust our midfield. I think that it like, um, there's our midfields that I'd be like, yeah, I think like. I thought that was meant to be um, your strength. Well, I think there's a few players who are playing really well right now. I'd just like to see it in like, yeah. I, I'm so curious to see how they go for the rest of the year because they've started the year so well. Very impressed. Okay, so you've got Collingwood, Geelong, Port Adelaide, Brisbane, Richmond wow. coming up. But then you have West Coast and North Melbourne, so mm. a little bit of cool down. You'll probably yeah. lose them, yeah. It'll be, <laughs> those, those will be the ones you lose. Mm. And the other team that has blown me away. Oh, and just to get to my power rankings as well, Ed, you'll notice that mm. the Bombers have taken the biggest uh, hike up of anyone. Um, see they're, that. Up, they're up three spots. Uh, the Cats are up three spots as well. Tigers are down, but we'll get to that mm. soon. So, yeah, I'm starting to to enjoy what I'm seeing from the Bombers. Yeah, cool. To believe a little bit. And then the last team is the that. Saints. Yeah. I think, um, and like I was saying, I know they lost this game. But they were so competitive. But I think I think the Pies are a top two team. And I'm starting to think that the Saints, maybe they should be in that sort of top four, top five area. Um, Bobby Hill had a game high or career game high, yeah, three goals. Um, 
Ginovan was back and he was good. Um, but da- Nick Dacos, 42 disposals, 846 metres gained from the back line. Not bad. He is someone that, like, I am starting to have to admit that he's actually good and he's not just some, like, Joel Bowden yeah. racking up yeah. touches in the half back line. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he still needs another three seasons of this, I think, for me to uh, come on board, but he's getting there. <laughs> Isn't yeah. I didn't I see he's like now entering one of the favorites to win the Brownlow? He'd be up there. It's he's the up there. Midfielders award, and the more touches you get, the more likely you are to win it. Basically, he and Harry Sheasel, who are playing in the half back line, are racking up possessions in that half back to mid sort of area. It seems to be like a nice sweet spot for them at the moment. Okay, question, um, bold question: Who is the best player in the comp right now? I needed time to prepare Just, for this. No, because like so there's some argument that Jeremy Cameron is the best player in the competition right oh, now because he like yeah there. he can play like lots of different positions. He's kicking heaps of goals in the common. He gets heaps of the ball, passes it to other players. Like I think that is a pretty strong argument, and I like I hope he gets votes in the Brownlow, even though like you said, Jazz, it is a midfielders award. Yeah, remember yeah. this season. If Buddy never won it, uh, he should definitely not win it. Remember the season, yeah, though, that Nat Fife won the brown low and Freo finished like 12th or 13th on the ladder, or maybe it was even 14th. Mm. He's sort of entering that kind of territory of, like, he is the team so much that, like, imagine if he wasn't on the team. We would be in pieces right now. Yeah. yeah. Well, he he leads the Coleman by four goals. Uh, he, I could see him winning the uh, the Lee Matthews trophy. Which Lee Matthews trophy. Yeah, the MVP. Oh, yeah. Who's that voted on by? I believe that's voted on by players or... Yeah. What would they know? <laughs> <laughs> it's all about the umpires. They know what's going on. <laughs> Just to uh, finish yeah, it's up... given by the... Sorry, it's given by the okay. Players Association. It's, yeah. Uh, MVP. I'm surprised you don't know this. It's a pretty big award. Mm. Just to finish on the Saints and their defense and how good they've been, St. Kilda's back six conceded only 10 goals from 64 inside 50s. Mm. That's pretty good. Well, yeah, me, me and Jazz like, watched a little bit of that on TV before we went to soccer. And, um, uh, yeah, the Saints are amazing. Like, their back line, it's like, um, like when you're playing under 10s and there's just some dude who's way bigger that marks everything. It's like Callum Wilkie. He just sits there and he intercepted everything. Like, <laughs> they could not get it past him, him and some other dude. Um, and uh, it was pretty good to watch. I was like, wow, they actually look quite good. Um, um, was it Easton, yeah. ja- Jacob Easton? I'm not sure. He's playing in form. Um, Sorry, Saints fans. Uh, yeah, I just, I was a, I was really impressed. Uh, they actually have, like, they look like a good team. I agree. I reckon they look like a team that could... I reckon they'll finish like fifth or sixth. What a turnaround for this defense! I like I heard, I heard about Incredible. the Ross Lyon effect, but like I didn't realize it could be this powerful. And think about all the injuries mm. they've got as well. They've been doing this with all those injuries. Yeah, that's the most yeah. impressive part to me. Yeah, the, it'll be an interesting case to see if they are it, the as Bill Simmons likes to call it the Patrick Ewing effect, where an injured star goes down and the team mm. as a collective is almost better for that star being out because they start acting as a team or something more. I'm not saying there's a player that's like, it's hard to compare basketball to football, but like all yeah. the injuries, if you start putting players who are your uh, Max King types and all that into the uh, lineup, if uh, that will disharmonize the playing group in any way, not in like a they're disgruntled with each other, but just out of the game plan or anything like that whether they're able to sustain it. Yeah, I fully I fully agree. That's definitely in the NFL. Probably, it's definitely not on the John Cats, but it's, it might be in the AFL. All right, could I just make a quick point on this? Please. So, uh, with regard to uh, injuries and how, how bad the Saints are, injuries are or whatever, um, you know, like, uh, do you ever have like a meeting or you're supposed to like see someone or whatever and like well like me i usually like oh shit i'm late or whatever um but <laughs> i'm like oh i was busy and then someone's like 
we're all busy, mate. Like, <laughs> every team has injuries. I think they're playing well. And I think, like, um, like Eston's got injuries. I'm sure Hawthorne's got some injuries. Like, you Not know, really. Guess which they, team has got- zero um zero games experience on the injury report adelaide. going in yeah it's adelaide you saw the swamp tweet couldn't yeah. believe that no injured players that's yeah. pretty good and they're um, in form so there's like this theory yeah, okay. um, right. amongst the <laughs> <laughs> amongst the fox footy crew that um you know like the the team that wins the grand finals usually is like the healthiest and yeah, yeah that definitely plays a yeah. big part yeah. in it is I don't, yeah, I don't think that's all of it, but it's definitely like um, it happened for for Brisbane a few years in a row, not last year, but a few years before that. They didn't win the grand final, but they made the prelim or semi final each year for years, and um, they they because they barely had an injury the whole yeah, time. Yeah, you look so, you look at any team that's had sustained success, like the Hawthorne three peat, the Richmond three peat, the Brisbane three peat. They all had their big stars, like their all Australian esque players for all mm. of them. Like very yeah. rarely did they yeah. have even the cats seven. last year. The only player we lost was Max Holmes the week before because he broke his um, arm. The D's the the year before that, like they were an incredibly healthy team. The Tigers, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Moving on to point number four from the the weekend. So, <laughs> what? Covered a bit. I want to be in that number five. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Uh, number five was just a, it was a long number five. It uh, was on all on all well. of our parts. So to summarize point true. number five, it was basically like the the, <laughs> the teams that I had like been big a big doubter on, and I was sort of like, okay, maybe I need mm. to adjust my readjust my expectation. And we uh, took that to talk about the footy at large. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think there was everything that was said needed to be said. So, <laughs> oh, so we can end the podcast now. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Just on that point. <laughs> yeah, number four for me. So it's it's the kids. So take a look, listen to um, these stats from the weekend just gone. Notable players, twenty one years and under. Nick Dacos, forty two disposals. Harry Sheasel, his fifth game, 31 disposals. He's averaging fourth in uh, fantasy points across the entire league. Will Ashcroft, 23 disposals. Chad Warner, 26 disposals, one goal. Chad Warner, you would you would think he's been in the league for like five years because we've said his name so much. Mm. Errol Golden, also in the Swans, 25 disposals. Ollie Henry, two goals. Anthony Caminiti, two goals. Um, he's going to miss the next three weeks. Uh, I was going to say, you might want to you might want to scratch that name out. <laughs> scratch that name out. Fuzzy Pickett uh, didn't realize he was so young. Two goals. Rochelle, one goal, twenty two disposals, and Caleb Sarong, thirty seven disposals. He is twenty two, so he doesn't actually qualify for this list. But still, twenty two, thirty seven disposals. Like I could go on, but Very like good. there's some amazing young talent coming through. There is, yeah. It but it just goes to show. For whatever reason, it always takes big fellas a while to develop. Yeah, like as as most of the awards were, like that was mostly midfielders. For whatever reason, they just find it easier to impact the game, whether it's strength and conditioning sort of thing. Like it's harder maybe, for a big guy. Maybe we won't even have big fellas. So it'll just all be midfielders. <laughs> go on the go on the other way from Crips and stuff being the big <laughs> midfielders. The, they'll be the, yeah. the small forwards going forward. No, but that the the those like Sheasel, I haven't I haven't really seen Sheasel play aside from maybe the Carlton game. But um yeah, Dacos is incredible, Ashcroft is incredible. I could not believe Warner's only twenty one years old. That's nuts. He seems like he's been around for ages. Mm. Yeah. So I was happy about that. I thought I'd shout that one out. Number yeah. three, uh my boy Jason Horn Francis getting the embrace after the game from Ken Hinckley. Mm. Uh, in the rain, it was beautiful poetry in motion. Mm. Um, I don't know if you caught the Port Adelaide game against the Little Dogs. Bit. Yeah. Solid game. And Jason Mon Francis played really well. And then did you see the mm. uh, presser after the game? This um, is the thing that I saw most of. <laughs> <laughs> this is what everyone's now blasting memory of the game. Yeah. This is Ken Hinckley. Yeah. Having a crack at everyone in the media for being so hard on Jason Horn Francis. Ed, did you see the Kane Corns bit? Um so so Kane Corns, I take it, 
he responded to that because he's kind of been singled out as one of the people who's been like giving shit to hate Jason Owen Francis, right? He's been the instigator. So here's my tweet from the weekend. So this is hmm. in response to Kane Collins saying the treatment from some of the North Melbourne supporters towards Jason Horn Francis has been disgraceful. graceful. That's a hmm. direct quote from yeah. Kane Collins. And I said, and a lot of other people said, David King said on Fox Footy, Kane Collins, who is the instigator of gaslighting all North Melbourne fans and demonizing Jason Horn Francis over not taking ice baths, has the audacity to say that they've been the ones who are disgraceful. And I basically called him a modern the the AFL's version of Skip Bayless. <laughs> he, well, he is, isn't he? <laughs> he is. He he yeah. oh, yeah, sorry. Someone else chiming um, in. I'm getting a, I'm getting Yeah, fired no, that's it. Because I um so I I watched what was, what's it called on Saturday nights after the games played. It's like you know, um, there's some footy show on the AFL website or AFL app, and I watched it. And Kane Corns and I think Mitch Cleary were on it. And um, I'm not familiar. And with Kane Corns. Well, yeah, it was just it's just on at the end of the day on Saturday or end of the night on Saturday. It summarizes what happened on that Saturday. Okay. And um, oh, it's called the Round So Far or something like that. Anyway. I was listening to it and I'm like, um, because I totally, I have the same reaction every time Kane Corn gets a headline or whatever, but I was like, I feel like once you sit back and just enjoy Kane Corns for what Kane Corns is, you're like, this is, <laughs> this is like art. This is like, <laughs> it's like so many like hot takes and just so much hypocritical stuff is like, <laughs> you would have, I mean, he must know that he's ridiculous like uh and he must just like feed into it and be like yeah totally i'm gonna have that point that you know i never did anything wrong ever and like he just he's so contrarian and so yeah it's beautiful <laughs> i enjoyed it there's some fantastic uh skip bayless old takes expose clips going around twitter at the moment because the draft <laughs> the nfl draft is next week they had a gonna, um seen these I should send them because they had a, a scouting analyst on their show who was basically saying that Johnny Manziel, he was the number one pick in 2011, I want to yeah. say, or t- maybe it was 2013. That was the terrible quarterback draft. So anyway, the scouts basically saying no one should take Johnny Manziel in the first two rounds. Like he's he's shocking. He's terrible. Skip Bayless rips into him. He said, he's telling him, like, you're going to be out of a job. You've got the worst opinion I've ever heard. That's appalling for you to say that. And then, of course, Lo and behold, Johnny Manziel was out of the league. I think after two years, two seasons, <laughs> it was one of the. He's considered one of the all-time worst uh, draft busts of all time. Wow! Sorry, so, uh, Johnny Football in AFL. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've got plenty of. Wouldn't that be maybe like Jack Watts or someone? Yeah, possibly. Or um, he wasn't. Uh, no, but he Mitch wasn't. Thorpe. He wasn't that bad. No, yeah. he's, and he, I think you got to be like up yourself before you even get drafted, sort of thing. True. Oh, what about what about John Patton? He looked pretty. Uh, thought he ruled the world, and then he <laughs> brought crashing down in some sexting scandal at Hawthorne. <laughs> well, that's a weird way to phrase it. I think <laughs> you just get over like <laughs> eleven years of his career, however long. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way you make a headline, Jess. <laughs> Ignore context. Nuance. Nuance. <laughs> say something exciting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, to bring down the mood for number two, not bring down the mood, but just sort of adjust the tone. Um, I caught the Nikki Winmar and Eddie Betts uh, embrace before the game, before the Pie Saints game on um, mm. Fox Footy. I don't know if you guys saw it. Uh, it was a, quite a beautiful moment between the two players and them talking about how much respect they've got for each other and how Eddie Betts is, was sharing his appreciation of how grateful he is that Nikki Winmar did take the stance 30 years ago um, and how that has sort of trickled into the league more recently over the last couple of years. It was a really nice moment. Yeah, well, that um, I was listening to another podcast about this, and it was talking about how Nicky Winmar, um, like he did it, and then he was just shunned from like footy and his football club. Uh, for, was he? Because uh, I, I hadn't heard yeah, about the aftermath of what happened there. He, 
he needed time off and uh, his footy club were furious with him. And the AFL was like, oh, just a few bad eggs. Like, it was mm. awful treatment of Nicky Wimar and um, no support. And But he, like, did it. And he, like, yeah, that's, I think it's like, you know, the stuff that was, um, you know, out there in the 90s was just truly, I mean, it was so openly racist, whereas obviously, like, we still live in a racist society, but it's a lot more like, you know, kind of systems and other shit. But, like, you know, um, and obviously some people saying horrendous crap over the fence, but, like, um, when Mm. he did it, it was like, holy shit, it's, like, seriously heroic, you know, thing Mm. to do. It was awesome. It was awesome. Getting to my number one moment from the round. Harry Himmelberg, holy oh. shit. What are two minutes <laughs> of football? <laughs> it might be the greatest two minutes of football. It definitely is so far this season, I think. Well, I mean, if you stretch you it out to five minutes, it's going to be Stewie Jew in the 2008 grand final when Hawthorne <laughs> upset uh, the <laughs> Geelong machine. But go um, on. Harry Himmelberg takes yeah, he incredible two mark. minutes of football all day. It just happened to be at the end of the game. <laughs> Um, now, this probably was Mark of the Year or in contention for, unlike my... It was, uh, pr- it was a pretty good Mark. My uh, rant Jas- last week. Yeah, Jasper was, like, not happy with this one at all. Um, Goes back, next- flushes yeah. the goal. Oh, were you were next to him? Yeah. That's, uh, I was next to him, yeah. We don't have to relive and, uh, it then. <laughs> oh, no, sorry, go on. We don't have to relive um, it. We're just talking about it right now. That's what we're yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're helping him process it. So, <laughs> uh, I got by go. saying how good it was, <laughs> um, Jasper's was a good the podcast. Mark. I <laughs> I I didn't realize it was Harry Himmelberg who touched the ball on the line until like last night. I was like, oh, he took a yeah. mark, and everyone's like, he played the best minute of football, and I was like, he took a mark and a goal. It's pretty good. It's <laughs> not like that, man. And I was like, yeah, okay. So he flushes the goal, yeah. and then in the la- the dying seconds of the game, goes all the way back to fullback, and takes the most spectacular leap and contorts his body in such a such well, an angle. Hold on, I think we're being very poetic here. <laughs> Thank you. I am I am sort of describing it, um, romanticizing it. He uh he jumped and touched the ball. He was the only man on the lines. He didn't have much to contest. I am as a mutu- as a mutual here, of the I game. I felt like it was uh it's like uh he like kind of summed up everything because he had to be in front of the line because he knew he was going to have to reach back to go as high as he could so he put himself just in front and then timed his like leap up so he was at the very highest point yeah he played while football the ball, man. Like... I, don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think he um so he didn't have amazing. the uh, the low intelligence to stand behind the line and try and touch the ball. <laughs> I wish yeah, it had exactly. been against. That's what diff- I, would have done. <laughs> I wish it had been against a different team for Jasper's sake, so we could have got Jasper's yeah. like honest input of what mm. he thought of it, like objective and an objective. Yeah, this is going. my objective opinion. Jasper wants yeah, okay. to see the tape to make sure it didn't actually cross the line. <laughs> I think still questioning the result. I <laughs> said it was touched as soon as it was, even before they yeah, went okay. to replay. Yeah. It yeah. was a it was a solid kick by Jamie MP as well. I thought it was going to go through for yeah, sure. Yeah, I thought it was home. Yeah, I mean it was home. It was just touched. It would have it would have been even. I think it would have been yeah because it was like even more spectacular that MP was able to create this moment of the dying seconds, and then that was topped again. It was as a mutual yeah. spectator, it was awesome to watch. It it was a great finish. I came in at just the right time to watch that game. So <laughs> yeah. So that rounds out my top five moments from a gather round. Uh, because in my power rankings, most teams have stayed the same. The only real change is Crows are rising. Bombers are up the most. And the Cats, I've kind of I've started to sort of doubt my doubts. And I'm kind of getting a bit more bought in. It'll be interesting to see how they go against the Swans this weekend. That'll be a tough matchup. Oh good. I have just seen your rating of the Blues. And friend of the show, Pablo... Uh, he will be amazed. You've got them 12. 12. 12. Wow. I, I, I opened the show with this. Tell me yeah. why I should rate, like, have them rated higher. What have wow. they done? They've you been the Giants, you... who nearly lost to the Hawks. They've mm. been the Cats when they were terrible and non-formed. The only team that the Cats have beaten is mm. the Hawks and the okay. Eagles. 
Tigers have been really bad. They beat them. Oh, no, sorry. They couldn't beat them. They tr- tied. They drew against them. I know that they won three games in a row, but it was sort of like what, yeah. like very uh, whatever yeah. games. And then they got destroyed yeah. by the Hawk, uh, the um, Bros. Which bed? No, that, that's future. That's uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's coming up. No, no. I think these are these are fair points. I just I think uh, that I just all the teams out, above yeah. them that I've got rated above them would beat them. Mm. Not that I that's what the power say, rankings are. They're not one for one comparisons, but yeah. Okay, yeah. I want to ask. I want to ask Jasper. Are you heartened by the Hawks' performance on uh, Sunday, or is it like we didn't win? No, I mean they did it. well. Like they, yeah. There's a lot to take out of it. It's a uh, yeah. As a Essendon fan, or even like uh, Carlton fans, the last five years, you know, there's a what's the uh, an honourable loss. Hmm. It's, uh, so many yeah. of them. There's some things to take <laughs> out of it. I mean, yeah, we we don't have much in the way of injuries, but we do have Mitch Lewis out, and that is a mm. glaring hole in our team. Is mm-hmm. a, a big marking forward. And you're about yeah, Will yeah, Day. And Will Day as well, the Daisy. Mm. Um, yeah. I was impressed, Jasper. I so impressed. I moved them up one spot. Oh, thanks, mate. Hey. I really appreciate it. So they've swapped with yeah. the Eagles. So that's my yeah, power rankings. I, I tuned into that Eagles game on the radio when I was driving somewhere, and the Eagles were down by like twelve goals in the second quarter. I was like, yeah. it was it felt like the game started with them ten goals down. Like, yeah, it was <laughs> wild. I bet the Eagles. So the line got out. I think it opened at like um, Cats were minus thirty points, and it closed minus fifty points. And I took the Eagles plus 50. And I was looking like a, a pretty big idiot for a lot of that game. But they, they did actually manage to come back and cover. They yeah. lost by 46. Mm. So I think people don't understand how hard it is to actually beat a team by 50 points when you're not getting a huge amount of momentum. Um, mm. Rasaba Radagalia taking six uh, intercept marks in the first quarter was pretty cool. Um, mm. I don't think he would do that against most other teams it just happened to be that you know the Eagles kept kicking the ball directly to him. <laughs> um, Jeremy Cameron is awesome. I thought he was going to kick like ten goals in that game. Um, a moment that was going to make my top five, but didn't in the end, although it probably should have, was the Zach Tui uh, from the twenty meters from the boundary line. Uh, Dukes around Tom Barris and then um, kicks a little cheeky check side goal. Um, oh, I did hear about this. I'm going to watch it. It was it was very nice. Do you hear that he um he said in some interview that he doesn't listen to a word that Chris Scott says in the huddle? <laughs> he was like, "Yeah, Chris knows, and it's fine." So I was like, "Wow, bit of a Dennis Rodman slagging off your boss." <laughs> isn't that though? I feel like that's not like it's isn't it like the equivalent of. When the commentators um, at quarter time or half time, you know, they always come out mm. and go to the say to the players, you know, ask the very important question: What was the message at half time? And it's like no one knows. It's, it's play and win. Like that's the forward. message. The message is win. Well, the yeah. players also aren't going to say he fucking threw a telephone <laughs> through the wall and uh, yeah. threatened to punch me if I didn't tag someone not, out of the game. Not every coach is Clarko, Jazz. <laughs> oh no, uh Brad Scott is known for his very calm demeanor. Look at him in the box, he's just like, you know, chilling out, got a bit just of wait until tea. you play yeah. under Marvel Stadium with the roof open when he wants it closed. Oh, <laughs> was he the one that complained about yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, Eddie, I will get you some cool intro music for your segment, but um oh. I think now it's time for Rules of the World. Everybody. No. Um, yeah, well, so we've got a really exciting one this week uh, that I've been like percolating in my mind for a little while. Um, so I think everyone's excited about, you know, this century because like... Um, I'm so excited so for this much... century. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I say it often. I'm so excited for this century. <laughs> um, I feel so current. Uh, anyway, so I'm excited about the role that... AI is going to play in our lives and not just AI, but all kinds of, you know, futuristic technologies. Like I I recently saw, you know, that like uh, some like robot 
um robots played soccer against each other and stuff like that and i was just like the afl is falling behind like where are they at with incorporating like i've seen our goal line technology it's awful it's like watching tv or like a vhs tape or something like <laughs> it is actually really I, shit isn't it? i think that's what they use i'm pretty sure they just found cameras kicking around from yeah. the afl days and like, oh, <laughs> so they got those <laughs> old ones you kind of like wind while you're um... <laughs> <laughs> um anyway so i was just like how can we bring like ai and tech into afl like 10 times more than it is right now and i think it's like this has to happen because otherwise we're going to be this like ancient, you know, cute game that no one cares about. So um, the first one is that, look, you know, we've already had our issues with umpires this year. Why couldn't we replace uh, the umpires with uh, AI robots? Because they would make no mistakes and there'd be no need for a replay ever. Uh, and, you know, you'd have like extra kind of like, um, robot kind of like cameras in their eyes that could look up as the goals go through and everything like that. You'd extra camera angles. What do you guys think? So, one thing you say mm -hmm. they've got cameras in their eyes, so they're still like they look like umpires still. They're just like <laughs> yeah. robots. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> they're not just like orbs or floating cameras or anything yeah. like that. They, and they still, still do like the, that, but it's <laughs> exactly in time. Like you know, what about hands. field umpires? Are they the same as well? I'm just sticking this with goal umpires for uh, now. Ah, okay. It's like, but it's like, you know, if there was a, a touched post, it's like you could zoom into like an atom to see whether like like graze the post or something. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I I don't even think this is like a far fetched idea. Not that you know all of your rules are far fetched <laughs> at all. Or but uh, like people, you reckon being... robot umpires are going to come in? Well, I don't. I'm not so much about robot umpires, but people have been clamoring for better technology to be able to zoom in on. Uh, the goalposts for ever since they were implemented, it shouldn't be hard to put a GoPro that's got 1080p resolution mm. where uh, they are. I, but no, you want to go I, a step I, further? Yes, I think so. I think that would, you know, we could go to Japan or Silicon Valley or something and just ask all the best people in tech to come back with their best umpire, and that would be amazing. It would just fix so many things in the game. I don't know. Well, so many things. What? Because <laughs> this is just goal umpires, so it's really yeah. just touch balls, really. Is well, once we get to the technology, like. Uh... So other than touch yeah. balls and balls in the post, what you else? Also, <laughs> you also never have a problem like Jeremy Cameron injuring the umpire when he's running and celebrating the goal. He can <laughs> the umpire and get clobbered. So. <laughs> yeah, he, he would be out for like. Yeah. He, he would have ended his season doing Six that if he ran into a volume. robot crushed brain <laughs> are they got to be like dropping oil and stuff on the field around where they are like yeah, they yeah. Slip cool. through, right? <laughs> yeah. a Aaliyah, Aaliyah would have slipped over the line when he went for the smother the yeah exactly field. and um harry himmelberg <laughs> yeah exactly all right i'm for it then i guess yeah, okay the thing i like about it is it would get rid of the descent rule because you can't hurt a robot's feelings so <laughs> yeah exactly the robot would be like In fact, you could probably like it? punch him and they'll just go thank you yeah, yeah that would be an play yeah, he's like the robot could retort that is an illogical statement. <laughs> yeah, you are wrong. <laughs> so they do talk like uh, the robot from Lost in Space, like very <laughs> danger, danger. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Could we give yeah, them absolutely. like act professional actors' voices, like the Pierce Brosnan? Yes. Yeah. Well, that, that, they're Grant, talking about yeah. Dangerfield in that instance. You know the way, like um, how the Brisbane players, when they kick a goal in their stadium, they can request mm. a song. Can we have players request uh, who's going to be umpiring the officiating the game? Yeah, different. It's yeah. like Tom Cruise. <laughs> yeah, Bert, it's yeah. like ways and stuff. You can have like uh, celebrity yeah. voice actors. Yeah, nice. Um, okay, okay. On to on to my next one. Um, so, all right. I was thinking about it and like we have coaches and everything and it, like and that's great like everyone loves ross the boss clarko i love this and, start we do have coaches <laughs> we do have coaches we love we them love everything it. but we love let's, this century let's, we have all our coaches let's, let's re let's reinvent this let's let's get rid of coaches <laughs> everyone and, loves this but let's scrap it all yeah yeah no, no 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 but we're, we're talking about bringing an afl in the 21st century and it's going to be ai team planning you like enter into the tactics uh, into a kind of chat GPT like thing, <laughs> and then you generate kind of like interesting new ch new tactics 
and like the AI just kind of works it out in the team instead of going to some lumbering old fossil from the you know last century you are going to the AI which is constantly generating new ideas for plays and everything like that I think yeah uh, this is Eddie, a have you, way have you actually okay. used chat GPT I'm not sure you know how it actually works I, I don't need it I don't need no, to. He's, I, a, he's a, a level of high. He doesn't need to yeah. know how it works. He just needs to know it exists. Yeah, so it, does, it doesn't invent ideas as much as it compiles uh, information based on all of history. Ooh. What if what if you what if you compiled every single coaching tactic ever used and then put it into Jack G, Chat GPT and got it to invent new ones? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. On all of them. I think this is a step away from just watching the. Uh, the CGI horse races at the TAB. You're just going to be watching uh, CGI footy at the uh, at the TAB, and it's all going to be pre-programmed. There's yeah, no, I, uh, I like uh, um, this. Is kind of like a Eddie. You're almost like that guy who's like, "Hey, did you guys know that there's um, stats online?" <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> maybe we should compile those and start creating analysis around them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, it could happen. I, I, you guys are off this one. That's okay. My next one is going <laughs> to blow your mind. Okay. Um. So we have a huge problem with concussion. Um. And injuries, dangerous tackles, or like not dangerous tackles, they get classed as dangerous tackles, like merits one, and it's like all kinds of stuff oh, happening. So uh, it's, uh, it's going on in that yeah. sentence. There. <laughs> anyway, okay. Unbiased. So, all right. Picture this. All right. Early nineties. You've got RoboCop. How about robo player because you you know a player gets a horrible injury or whatever but we use the best in tech to kind of you know um combine like robot tech with their brain and everything to make sure it's working again and they actually become even better than they were beforehand and so you know you've got robot players like robocop from the early 90s i'm loving this because mm. it's we're not we're not creating whole robot players. We are waiting until a player gets injured, like uh, Nathan mm. Brown leg break, yeah. and then they get their leg amputated and they get a robot. But one it becomes robot. an even better leg. And it's like... Yeah, exactly. Faster, yeah, yeah. Stronger, but then you'll have everything. like... Uh, you'll have players playing really dangerously <laughs> in the hopes that they get some kind of crazy injury that they get replaced with robot parts. Yeah. Everyone is trying to take a specky every single ball. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm for that. Yeah. This is kind of like a cool, see, I think because we're going to have to start thinking about it. this is like a cyberpunk yeah, kind of mm, um, very cyberpunk. thing of yeah. like, you know, like the hot topic at the moment is um, rules around like trans athletes and what mm. they can and can't enter into. Not that we'll go mm. into that now, but, yeah. you know, in well, that's my next topic, actually. <laughs> yeah, good, good, good. In, um, you know. In a hundred years, it could. This mm. could be the next big topic. A hundred of... years, I reckon. Four years at most, we're in gonna have four years. Players. Sorry, Android players. Four year, robo players. In four right years, then. the the it'll be. You know, can people with cyber implants play sport? Is that fair? Mm, uh, maybe true. there's a a break off league. Like they, uh, all, the, all the robo players go and start their own league, and then you can go. I mean, I, I'm. This is now league, starting but... to encroach on the trans debate again. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> it's all. Fun. We'll um, uh, I'll I'll keep it at uh, robo players now, but I'm taking that as a yes from both of you. That's okay, definitely yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, for the record, I think that they should be allowed yeah. to to play. Cy yeah, cyber yeah. cyberware. <laughs> So we've yeah. been and doing this for five weeks now. And we've been collating new rules for for more. Mm. I'm just wondering, has has AFL head office got back to you about any of them yet? No, not yet. Oh, and okay. What is this new sport oh, we've like... invented <laughs> based on all these rules? <laughs> well, it's it's the beautiful game of AFL as we know it, just improved. I'm looking um, forward to the end through, of the season when know, when we come up with the the just entirely new game and mm. create an entirely new podcast I, around it. I want to stand... I'm standing on the shoulders of giants that came up with the stand rule, mm -hmm. uh, the protected uh, area sorry, rule. No, that was actually <laughs> a dwarf. That came up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Um, uh, last one for this week. It's kind of a continuation of the one before, but I was thinking, like, you know, I saw that those Japanese robot dogs, you know, um, running around in Japan or whatever, and uh, what about... Um, they could carry the water to the players on the field instead of like uh, runners, and uh, they could, like, you know, check the players' exact electrolyte levels or something like that. 
um, or exactly like, you know, they could do like little x-rays on the run and stuff like that. So it's like, you know, <laughs> like if it plays, the run. <laughs> you know, if a player's like broken their leg, but they're still playing out or something like that, just incorporating robots as the runners instead of like uh, people because a robot could do way more. So, you know. I mean, if we're creating rules, I think there's got to be a rule that says you should absolutely stop playing if you break your leg. You should not continue <laughs> playing. At no, all. remember, remember in uh, the fateful 2012 grand final where Goods broke his leg, but he kept playing, and a robot will go in there and be like, "Nah, dude, I know your leg's broken. You're off." <laughs> and they speak like that. Nah, dude, come on, <laughs> mate. It's a casual, like, folksy robot. <laughs> They're basically yeah. Poochie from uh, Itchy yeah. and Scratchy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I would I, like if, if the dogs were, uh, like, if they could te- check, like, dehydration levels or, like... Yeah, exactly. They could the exact level detect, of dehydration. Detect yeah. probability of, like, cramping or dehydration or, mm. like, pulling a muscle. Like, yeah, if they... So, exactly. before a player pulls a hamstring, it could detect that it's sort of, like, on its... It's, it's about yes, to happen. exactly. Yeah. yeah. And, I mean, and, it sounds like a medical marvel, really. So, and I think it's and it thing. could give you the exact amount of hydration that you need, rather than like too much. You need to go to the toilet or something. So, <laughs> yeah. and you wouldn't have to share they, a bottle with everyone. Yeah, do exactly. they bring out like a portable urinal if you need to go to the toilet? Or yes, <laughs> you can pee in. The oh, robot. you just pee into, into the, the robot dog's <laughs> mouth. <laughs> well, I was going to say mouth, but you went there anyway. <laughs> I mean, it's only got a certain many places it can go. Yeah. <laughs> oh god. Anyway, um, Eddie, another yeah. um, successful. Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> do we have any yeah. trivia this week, Jack? Beautiful yeah, week. Yes, we do. We do. We have. Uh, 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 I mean, it's a pretty easy one. Well, mm-hmm. well starts easy. Yeah. Uh, so we mentioned it earlier. Johnny mentioned it earlier mm-hmm. in his uh, top five. Uh, Nikki Winmar, thirty years ago, round four mm-hmm. to the day, uh, was the uh, infamous or famous shot of him lifting up the uh, the jersey and pointing at his uh, skin. Who won? Oh, who were they playing against? Oh, I know this one, Collingwood. That is correct. That's an easy one. Who won the game? Ooh. Collingwood? I'm going Saints. It is Saints. They won by the <laughs> The photo was actually taken after the game had finished. Ah, oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Interesting. Hmm. Yeah, and right. then a final one. Who was the highest goal kicker on either team? It was 1993. Oh. So I've got... Uh, Go on, plug in. Uh, I don't believe he was actually playing. No. Oh, He's not okay. Gonna... Sam Rocker? No, I was he. Just uh, guessing that train, you guess. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I mean, dude, that's the point of the game. But uh, he is. He's on the Saints. Uh, he's also an Indigenous player. Oh, uh, Gilbert McAdam. Correct. At five yeah. goals. Nice. There Not you bad. Go. Not bad. I didn't. Um. Because I, I, I feel like I used to know that name, but it's kind of like gone out of my memory. Gilbert McAdam. It sounds yeah, familiar. Yeah, well, Ma- Mangrook Footy Show. Like I used to. That's what. Ah, oh, he's on Mangrook. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I miss Man- Mangrook. Yeah. yeah. I that's like that show. show. Yeah. Mm. There you go. That's trivia. That's yeah, it. Nice We're one, done. Jazz. Beautiful. <laughs> All right. Except for our preview of this week. Let's finish up with yeah a couple of games this week. Like I say at the top, not a huge amount of exciting games, but I want to go through a couple of. Key injuries, um, like we were saying, Crows look all right. Brisbane looks not too bad. Carlton's mm. injury list looks pretty bad. So as we've always said, so Zach Williams is out for the season. Mm. Adam Sard hamstring, he's out. Um, Owies is out three to four weeks with a hamstring injury. Mitch McGovern has a calf injury, but he might play. Jack Martin's out three to four weeks. Caleb Marchbank's out two to three weeks. Sam Doherty's out mm. three to five weeks. Pretty yeah, right. and Cunningham three to four weeks. Pretty extensive list, so mm. they could be in a bit of trouble um, mm. when they play. Where are they? Are oh, they play the Saints? So yeah, it's gonna yeah. Be, that if, should be a tough one. If they miss the finals, does Voss get sacked? Ooh. Mm. I think they First really season. like him. I don't think so. The second season. Second season. Yeah. yeah, I think they really like him. 
I wouldn't be surprised if they sacked him. I was going to, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they did, but I think they're aiming for more stability, I'm guessing. That's the external message, at least. So I can't imagine they would, depending on how poor they finish the season. But Well, mm. Jazz, they say that the only constant in life is change. So. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Patricia. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm uh, going... Um, uh, match of the round for me is... Uh, I was just looking at it before. Uh, I think... Ooh, Dockers and Western Bulldogs is a huge game. Like, if... The, if the dogs are able to get out over Frio, like that would be a massive win. Do you think? I think Frio has been pretty bad. They only yeah. just beat the Suns and destroyed my parlay of Suns mm. plus nine and a half. He's in the Optus Stadium, though. That's true. I think dogs have been pretty good. I think, like, they had a really, they like I was saying last week on last week's mm. show, they drew the short straw having to play Port Adelaide on Gather Round. Mm. I think it would have been That's any other, game. and in torrential rain, like, I think if it had been mm. any other circumstance, they probably could have won that game. So, mm. Freer, Freer's been bad. Mm. We'll see if they can I think, um, I kind of, I hope the dogs turn it around. And then, um, are you feeling nervous at all about, uh, or confident about Sydney at Cats? Home ground. So this will be our first game at Cadenia Park this year, which usually wow. bodes well for us, um, mm. except for when we got smashed by Freo last year at Cadenia Park. But mm. hard to say. We're dollar fifty favourites. We shouldn't be that far in front. What we that must mean we're like thirteen or fourteen point favourites. I think mm. like the Swans could, in all likelihood, mm. win this game, especially if they're coming off a. a Close was a close loss. Close win. No, actually, comfortable win. They smashed Richmond. Smashed yeah, Richmond. Yeah, Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So in that case, yeah, maybe it would be not too bad. Um, Buddy might play, although he might still be in- injured. Rampy. Joel Amati's out, and he yes. looked really good on Amati's Friday out. night. He's out for eight to ten weeks with a hamstring injury. Man. Oh, didn't he? he looked, I think he needs he surgery on that, doesn't he? Probably. Yeah. That's not good. Having said that, we lost Tyson Stengel on the weekend. He broke his arm or his wrist, um, mm. and we lost Reese Stanley as well. So, I don't know. Nick Revolt will be happy. <laughs> Why? He hates Reese Stanley. I hates hate Reese. I hate Reese Stanley. <laughs> <laughs> Nick Revolt, it's like any opportunity to bag out Reese Stanley, he takes it. Probably because he looks like him. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> um, I think you guys are overthinking it, though. It's uh, we got one v four and two v three this weekend. That's that's the match. One v four. St Kilda versus Carlton, and then yeah. Essendon versus Collingwood. Those I'm the, uh, I'm so excited to watch Carlton. Both those games. Carlton are not a top four team. Uh, <laughs> that's well, right. You're it's, it's, but if you look at the it. ladder, you would find that they are actually in fourth position. Holy shit! And this game is a coin flip. Mm. Yeah. I am putting all of my money on the Saints. You heard it here first, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Saints are a lot. There'll be no show next week as Johnny will have lost all of his money. <laughs> um, That's okay, wild. Who, who's everyone's tip for Anzac Day? Collingwood. Pies. Sorry, Eddie. That's all right. I reckon... It might be competitive. Okay, you guys are going Pies. I'm going to go the Mighty Bombers for a... If, oh, if they win on that day, which I, I will tip them, uh, then I will start to get a little bit excited. And, <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Bombers uh, might be without Wiedemann if he's still concussed. Peter Wright, obviously, is not playing for a long time. Zach Merritt is on suspension. Guelph is still out with a hamstring injury. Nick Cox is still out with a back injury. Mm. Um, could be tough. Pies have got their fair share of injuries as well. Mason Cox is still TBD. Um, Lipinski's not expected back till later in the year. McStay's out with a broken finger. Taylor Adams is suspended. So Taylor Adams is a key player for him. And Mm. Darcy Cameron is out four to six weeks with a knee injury. Yeah. Does that mean I need to update my fantasy roster? Possibly. I didn't even (laughs) see that. I think um, I... I think they could really worry us with their ball movement. 
But uh, if if uh, Draper and Phillips play to the level they did the weekend prior, I think they will make um, life a lot harder for Collingwood because um, they're, they're actually, you know, they're not world beaters yet um, or Draper isn't a world beater yet, but he's pretty good. And so is, Phillips is a solid contributor and they could easily kick another four or five goals between them. So that is... My my tip for how Essendon wins is that uh, the rucks dominate and aerially and in the ruck contests and uh, and uh, they pull through, kick six goals between them and Draper wins the Anzac medal. There you go. Hey, <laughs> there you go. I'm just yeah. sending a screenshot to the group chat. Mm. Yeah, we'll finish on this. It is the latter. I'm not. After this, I will stop banging on about how bad the Blues are. Mm. Oh, look, at, percentage. look at the percentage yeah. of the top four teams. 144, 128, 120, and then Carlton, 96. The Swans, 132. Dees, 130. Yeah. 118, 111. Port Adelaide, 92. So that's the next one. And then the Cats mm. are on 119. Wow. I feel 100%. like there's a, lot of, there's a lot of noise in there so early on in the season. Mm. Like like the cats being 120, that's from drubbing us by drubbing the hawks by 80, and yeah. then uh, and West Coast, yeah. So like if Carlton had to play the hawks and West Coast to start the season, they may have a better percentage. It's a fair point. It's a fair point. But the teams they played were 15th, 10th, 12th. Uh, and who do they play last weekend? They lost to the Crows, who are now seventh, but who well, were. I don't like defending Carlton. I just I know, feel I like that someone needs to. I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm not saying. I'm just saying. Is this, I, is this a segment? John's just saying. I'm not saying. I'm just, just saying. saying. Dude, that, that's my entire Twitter timeline. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't get destroyed. Nice. All right, that's going to do it for this week. Thanks to everyone for listening. We'll catch you next week. We'll be back after five days of football, followed by a pod every Wednesday. Appreciate everyone. Thank you, gentlemen. We'll see you next week. Oh.